Welcome everyone, this is the tutorial for the speed bump achievement, which requires that you kill the Odin before Manx sends him at you. That happens at 22 minutes and 30 seconds. So you've got 22 minutes and 30 seconds to kill the Odin. I tried this a couple of different ways, and this is the build that I really like for Kerrigan. Uh, you can make variations on this, of course, and, and actually if I did it again, I might choose Vespine Efficiency over the twin drones, but I think the very most important thing here is Mend. And as far as your army goes, I tried this with a couple of different units. Um, what I found to be the easiest was Broodlords. Uh, you can go right up the middle and fly. Flyers obviously have a big advantage over ground units. You don't have to kill everything, so I chose Broodlords. Uh, so that, that's what we're going to do. So the very first thing you got to do here is uh, clear the base to the bottom right of yours. So he'll send a couple of Marines at your bases initially from where Rainer is and uh, so run over there get the Marines and then take your army what you start with and run over to the bottom right to clear out that base your your nemesis in this level in beating it with Broodlords is going to be getting enough Vespine so you've got three geysers in your in your base and you've got three in the natural over there to the right once you take it over so you want to get that done as soon as possible so you can get that Vespine harvesting in progress the twin drones comes in handy because you can get your base operating at max and your expansion really quick. And I like the automated extractors for this as well. So you can just run a, run a drone over there and it can be harvesting gas before the hatchery is even up. So as you're, as you're clearing this base to the right, um, be as efficient as you can with your units. Try not to lose a bunch of them because we're not planning on reinforcing our ground army here for quite a while. So use MEND every cooldown. Keep your army around Kerrigan and keep them keep them alive. Clear this out. It, it's not a big challenge. It's not hard to clear it out, but just try to keep as many units as you can because he will send stuff at you and you're going to want a little bit of an army to stop it. So use Kerrigan's abilities. Obviously she's very powerful. Use Crushing Grip to stop the damage and you can use Kinetic Blast to kill units off and, and mostly just spam mend. So once you once you free up that base, there's more structures up immediately to the top right, and you want to kill those. Otherwise, they'll they'll continue producing units and they'll keep sending them at you. So get your base going there, and then clear out the units above the natural. So that's what we're gonna do here. Again, being very careful to keep our army alive. Not a lot interesting here. The beginning is not too, not too crucial. Mostly, you just have to stay alive and keep your Vespine harvesting at max. Um, you can always catch up because you're Zerg and you've got lots of larvae, and so you can, you can build a lot of mutas really fast and mutate them into broodlords really fast to beat the timer. Just as long as you have enough Vespine to get it going. So, I'm not going to bother in this entire level opening up any of the pathways. I'm not gonna even though even though it's pretty easy it's just gonna take time away from your micro and you're gonna want Kerrigan in position to deal with incoming attacks just because she'll handle them so well so I'm not even gonna go because they won't really help. I, it'll release a bunch of units it'll immediately die to the defenses there's a bunch of siege tanks and bunkers and Thors in place and it doesn't really help you to unlock your allies. So just kind of sit tight, make sure you've got Kerrigan in position to deal with the incoming attacks, and uh, set up set up a defense. Get your get your uh, spires down, and you'll notice I threw three of them down there. I immediately upgrade one to a greater spire as soon as it's done, and then I get the upgrades going in the other two, because um, I want to have the Broodlords all the way upgraded by the time I attack at around 20 minutes. So there go the upgrades. You could throw down, I should have done this, I, I, I didn't have the Broodlings all the way upgraded, I didn't have the Melee and the Carapace upgraded, but you could throw down another Evolution Chamber and get your ground, ground unit upgrades going at the same time, just so the Broodlings are tougher. Uh, it's, not, it's not crucial, but it would help. So you'll notice I pull all my Spine Crawlers and Spore Crawlers down there into a line so they can be as efficient as possible when units come over there, because for the most part I'm going to park Kerrigan over here at my natural. And as soon as I get my my economy going here, you notice I had a few extra drones on me. So I'm going to start pulling them off and throwing down some spines and spore crawlers because they'll send banshees and Vikings at you pretty consistently. So you're going to want some forces over there to deal with it. There goes a the whole army, and 
it looks like a ton of stuff, but Kerrigan can handle it easily as soon as she's there. But where you'll run into trouble is, is if she's off gallivanting, trying to free your allies, or trying to protect Raynor. Um, as far as Raynor goes, you don't need to go over there and help him at all until Mink sends the Sky Furies at him. And at that point, you will want Kerrigan there to deal with them. And even her by herself, you don't need any units. You don't need to send Broodlords or Mutalists or anything. Just Kerrigan by herself will do it. Um, if you've played very much um, replay here, you've probably learned that Drop Pods is by far the best skill for Kerrigan as, as far as the ultimates go. And uh, so in a pinch, you can use Drop Pods, and that'll really help you out. Um, especially at the very end, we'll want to have that off cooldown. I, I ended up not needing it, as you'll see in this video, but it's it could it could definitely make a big difference if you didn't quite have enough Broodlords by the time you got to the Odin. Another thing you'll see over there I did on my defense was to park a couple of queens, um, put them on hold position behind all your spine crawlers and spore crawlers. That will make a world of difference because once I get my Broodlords together and I start moving out, I'm going to ignore that natural. And the queens will keep the, the spine crawlers and spore crawlers alive while they hold off the, the attacks while I'm out running around. Okay, as soon as you get your brood lords up, you're going to want to run run up and start attacking stuff. Be active with them. Get the static defenses that are going to be in your way taken care of. There's a bunch of siege tanks immediately outside of your base. And then there's a building you need to kill to extend the bridge so Kerrigan, Kerrigan can cross over. So you'll see I, I do that here. So one thing you're going to want to be careful of as you're flying around with brood lords is the both the thor and the turrets are really effective against your brood lords they don't have the same attack damages versus armored that they do in the campaign so i mean normally you wouldn't have to worry about a thor with brood lords um not counting i guess the new high impact payload but uh they do actually a lot of damage to the brood lords as if they were mutalisks and their their turrets their anti-air turrets do splash damage and again they do a ton of damage to the broodlords so you need to be really careful and not let the broodlords be unattended keep them under control make they're sure they're not taking a bunch us. of damage and oh, when you feel yeah. comfortable We're with coming. it get Kerrigan over there with the broodlords so that she can heal them so you see that the sky furies got sent to Raynor and it's no problem at all to clean that up with Kerrigan once we clean that up we're going to run her over to the Broodlords and we will never worry about Raynor again because we're going to be in the way of the battle cruisers when they get sent. So we'll clean those up before they ever get to Raynor. Um, ultimately, you're going to want to end up with probably something around 24 Broodlords and then we're going to move out. And you won't need to worry about any anti-air. Don't bring a bunch of mutas. It'll be worthless. They'll just die. And Kerrigan can easily handle anything that they send as far as anti-air. So once you've got Kerrigan and you're a decent amount of Broodlords, go ahead and move out. Start clearing out this base. This is the path we're going to take to get up to the Odin. A lot of this stuff Kerrigan can almost take by herself. So she's pretty impressive. As you're building your Broodlords, you can see I kind of left some down there by my natural just in case because I was nervous about how much stuff they were going to send. But uh, either way you want to do it, you can walk over this stuff with your Broodlords and leave Kerrigan down there, or you can leave Kerrigan down there and you can take the base with Kerrigan and leave the Broodlords down there to defend your natural. It doesn't matter. So you see I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send my Broodlords up there and start cleaning, cleaning stuff out. Uh, ignore the man behind the curtain there. Kerrigan did not die. Just kidding. I was careless. It doesn't even matter. It's not that close. As long as you go straight for Broodlords, stay on top of your upgrades, uh, it's not it's not that tight. You can make it pretty easily. Just uh, just be careful with the Broodlords and don't lose them. When, uh, when Kerrigan's there, you can be a little more reckless because the heal is really effective. And like I said earlier, that's why I would highly advocate making sure you have the heal ability mend with Kerrigan on this mission. Um, she'll, she'll effectively double the amount of Broodlords you have just because you can keep them alive. So here we go, we're, we're getting into it here. Our Broodlords are fully upgraded, and Kerrigan's back alive, and we're going to start actually pushing up to win here. 
Remember, we've only got until 22 Battle minutes and 30 inbound. seconds before the Odin gets sent at us. You can see there how much damage the Thor does. It's fairly ridiculous, so engaging stuff like that without carrying can be a little bit of a problem. So here's the battlecruiser army that I was telling you that we were going to intercept. So I went ahead and threw down the drop pods. Um, Kerrigan can take out the battlecruisers pretty easy. Crushing grip is really effective and anything on the ground will just melt to the root lords. So it works well. It's a beautiful combination. The amount of damage Kerrigan can absorb is just ridiculous. So, there's there's a number of paths you can take to get up to the Odin. I'm probably going over the top here on clearing stuff out. I'm going to end up going to the left here, not the right, and clearing stuff out along the way. I could definitely have done this faster. Um, but I guess that should just make the make it evident that the achievement is that much easier. So there's there's this definitely isn't like the speed bump achievement where you don't have seconds to spare. You've, you've definitely got time on this one. It's not too tough. So you can see there the. The defenses hold pretty well there, assuming you have some cleans to heal those up. I tried to get the hatchery there and the two extractors, um, but the bottom line was I ended up being just too distracted to hold it. Um, he periodically sends units, and I didn't have any defense there, and it gets taken out. And, and I, you just you really don't need it, ultimately. So I wouldn't bother again. So I don't, I don't recommend you really bother trying to take that base. Um, I never got enough Fesky off of it to be, for it to be really be of any value. And are already I've got enough Broodlords that I can win it. So I'm just going to start moving out. It is time. That base there that I was attacking to the north was... Our conquest um, continues. Makes not important. Suffer. It's it's actually not in your way. I wasn't I wasn't paying close enough attention to how the map layout is, but you don't need to clear any of that. It's better to go up one road or the other. Um, probably should have gone right way back there where I where I started that second expansion and and never gone up this path. I'd have been to the Odin by now, I'm sure. Getting ready to attack the Dominion. Be ready so, shortly. Here you go. Once once you get to the to the main base in front of the gate, it starts getting pretty hairy. They do have a number of Vikings up here. They have the turrets. They have um, a lot of stuff that can do a bunch of damage to your broodlords. So just just remember to keep spamming mend. Just keep it on cooldown. None of none of your other abilities are really important compared to that one. Your broodlords will kill everything, short of the Vikings. And Kerrigan will, will take out the Vikings in no time without using your abilities. So just keep mending the broodlords. And as long as they stay alive, you'll win this easily. You can see my, my drop pods are almost off cooldown again. Um, but it, it ends up not even being very close. Just make sure you have Kerrigan stand on top of the Vikings, keeping them off the broodlords. And it won't be a problem. I'm probably killing more than is necessary there too, so I could have I could have gone around the the top more and avoided killing a bunch of those structures. But the you can see how quickly the brood lords just keep this stuff alive. So there you go, piece of cake, guys. Brood lords. <laughs>